What if Kuroki Gensai wasn't in the Kang Industrial Annihilation Tournament? Welcome to a new Kangen video, guys. Just wanted to make a fun, quick little, you know, what if for Kangen I hope you enjoy. If you do, make sure to subscribe. And take note, I'm recording the whole video live with like no cuts, hopefully. So if I make some mistakes, it is what it is. But yeah. So Kuroki Gensai, let's pretend he wasn't in the tournament. Let's say it was some random scrub that Rito like mid diffed or low diffed, it doesn't really matter. Rito just defeated whoever he faced in the first round if it wasn't Kroki Gensai. So I'll quickly, you know, move up the winners from the, you know, first uh, round on this side because that won't really be adjusted for the whole tournament because, of course, you know why he isn't on that side. Uh, Mutaba and Seki. So Sawpang so moves up, Ray moves up. Rito, whoever he fights, you know, moves up. So, yeah, of course. Kiryu will move up. Then we have, you know, Hatsumi Sen. Uh, Bando? Um, is that right? I think that's right. Galang. And then... That isn't right. Wait. I'm... I think I messed something up. Isn't Hatsumi... Yeah, I think... Hatsumi's meant to be... no. Am I, am I tripping? Wait. Mm, okay, I'm not tripping. I thought I was tripping for a second. Never mind. Yeah, don't worry about that. So, uh, yep, so Cosmo wins that. Uh, Kure Ryan... no, not Kure Ryan. Arima wins that. Uh, Waka wins that, and Mutaba wins that. Then we have Ray winning that. So, instead of Kiryu fighting Kuroki, we have Kiryu fighting Ryuto, which of course would most likely go to Kiryu. I don't see Ryuto really even touch him, probably getting taken out by one blink and Rakushasha Palm at this point. So, Ryuto made it past the first round, but yep, Kiryu isn't taken out here, so yeah, that's pretty solid. Then we have, you know, uh, Hatsumi winning against Bando, and then, you know, Kano defeating... Um, Galang, so yep, Galang vs. Oyama, Oyama moves on, Waka vs. Mutaba, Waka moves on. And then the major change in the tournament, which is this round here, we have Rei vs. Kiryu. So, one thing to take note is Rei probably won't think he needs his amped version, because Rei was one of the only other fighters who was aware of Kuroki Gensai's power prior to him actually demonstrating it in the second round against Kiryu Setsuda and, you know, everything after that. As we know, Kuroki Gensai killed Rei's father, so he was aware already of Kuroki Gensai and already considered him, since his first fight against Rito, someone who's on the same tier or possibly stronger than the fan Kano Gito. And that's a major reason why Rei you know, pretty much asked Reno to, you know, use her power to amp his speed to the maximum with his, you know, super sim mode, as I like to call it. But I don't think he will actually sacrifice that to, you know, fight Kiryu in this round. He will be, you know, very serious, similar to how he was against Sword Pain. But I don't think he will enter his, you know, super amped mode. So we'll move these. So, yep, yeah, these two fight. Oma, you know, defeats Waka. So for this fight, Ray in base to base probably has a disadvantage. And I think Kiryu, with his car style techniques, should be able to eventually overpower Ray. Also considering that Kiryu has the Nikyo style technique indestructible, he should be able to counter most of Ray's attacks, which is going to be, you know, pretty deadly. And then with all his other hacks, you know, whether it be Koa style and Nikyo style or combination attacks, he should be able to eventually wear down Ray and defeat him quite easily. And if it does result in Kiryu entering Fallen Demon, I think that's a big wrap at this point. And I really do scale pretty much Kiryu Setsuna, whether it be base or Fallen Demon, a little bit above base Ray. The only Ray that I really see winning in this matchup is Amp Ray. And there's no real reason for Amp Ray to even, you know, exist at this point unless he does see Kiryu as a major threat. But there wouldn't really be much of a reason that he would because he defeated Nakata Ren in the first round. He didn't think too much of that. And then he would like super low diff Rito in the second round. So Kiryu wouldn't have even showcased his, you know, full abilities until this fight. And will most likely catch Ray off guard and defeat him like that. So with that, Kiryu will be moving on to the next round instead of, you know, the Kroki, which initially would have been. We have Kano, you know, defeating Hatsumi Sen like normal. 
And then we have Kiryu vs. Kano. So this will be very interesting. Kano has some knowledge of the Nika style. We don't know exactly how much. All we do know is he knows the indestructible. Then we have Kiryu who probably noticed that, you know, Kano is aware of some Nico style stuff. As a whole, Kiryu will pressure Kano quite a bit because Kano won't have, you know, extreme knowledge of the Koa style like Croak against I have. But considering this is one of the final rounds, as demonstrated more so in Cosmo and Oma, as the rounds go on, other fighters learn their opponent's techniques and work out counters. And someone like Kano, who is probably the most adaptable fighter in the whole tournament or in the whole series, should have worked out the Koei style techniques fairly well now. And considering he has indestructible, he should be able to counter Kiryu's Rakushasha Palm somewhat, as we saw in Kiryu vs. Oma, which I forgot to mention won't actually happen outside of the arena because Kiryu would have never been defeated. We'll probably still have the raid in between from, you know, the Guardians and the older Hayami, but we'll just see Kiryu, you know, destroying some random Guardians, Oma destroying some random Guardians as well. We'll still have Oma getting all his memories back, but we just wanted to get the, you know, crazy fight outside of the arena that we initially got. Because Kroki Gensai defeating Kiryu was a main reason why Kiryu became more insane and had that fight with Oma outside of the tournament. So yeah, with this fight, Kano would most likely counter Kiryu with his indestructible and eventually overpower him. And I think Formless would also be quite deadly for Kiryu. So Kano would probably defeat, you know, Kiryu Setsuna. And then the final would be Tokita Oma versus Kano Yito. Also considering that Kano wouldn't have been, you know, on the brink of death after fighting Kiryu, he won't like low dip him, but he won't fight him to a degree where he gets severely injured, where he won't be able to be in pretty much peak condition considering how much, you know, damage Kano can take and how fast he can actually heal. And then we'll have, you know, Kano versus Oma in the final. Oma still on the brink of death and Kano in fairly good health after, you know, being fully recovered after Galang low diffing Hatsumi and probably like mid diffing uh, Kiryu. So then we have the final. So Oma will, as he did in the Krogi fight, get his advance back. When he does that, that's where, you know, Oma will eventually get the advantage and start, you know, beating on Kano. But as the fight goes on, I think Kano as a whole will eventually overpower Oma. It'll probably be a high diff fight because even though Oma was, you know, severely injured during that fight against Krogi, he still put up a pretty good fight and, you know, we always have the Demon's Bane to, you know, look out for. And Demon's Bane could magically give Oma the win against Kano in this fight. But if I'm being honest, I don't think so. And if I had to bet on this fight, if this was, you know, how the tournament actually took place, if Kuroki didn't exist, I think Kano would actually be the winner of the tournament. And yet that's my opinion on, you know, this what if. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And yep. Hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. As always, shout out to the people who support the channel via the Patreon. But yep, that's it, guys. Peace.